Welcome back to In a Tiny Garden. Today, we're gonna start out at the allotment to plant some more carrot seeds. The previous ones we planted didn't germinate very well because it's been really dry. So these should be good to go because we're due some rain for quite a while, which is great news. And then we're going to also plant some flower seeds there, some more flower seeds. And then we're gonna come back here, transplant some of the plants that have been crying out to get into bigger pots. And then we're gonna be sowing some more seeds. So we're gonna be sowing some more herbs, including basil finally. So it's a great time to start sowing your basil because uh, they like heat and lots of different kales. And I'm also gonna sow all my squash. That means I've done all my curcubits for the year including the cucumber and courgette from last week, and then the squash. So that's the gourd family, and it's one of my favorites to grow. And um, they're not great for tiny spaces, but now that I've got the allotment, I love to grow them. So there's eight different varieties I'm gonna be sowing. So stay tuned, I hope you'll join me. So it's been really dry and windy out here and it means that I haven't had great carrot germination but the Nantes too have germinated quite well and so have the deep purple but Black Nebula and Long Red Surrey haven't at all so I'm going to replant them, uh, re-sow them and it's a great time because it's about to rain for a week because everything was really dry. I gave it um, a good soak before so that everything sinks in nicely. So I'm going to plant a few new varieties as well like deep purple. I'm gonna sow some salsify for the first time and it's grown a bit like parsnip, which are here and have had terrible germination because like I said, it's been really dry, um, no rain, but the rain is coming. So another great time to plant, to try and plant some salsify. I'm gonna sow some extra parsnip as well, just in case. So these are the salsify seeds. So I station sowed the parsnips this year and it hasn't gone very well. So I'm gonna sow these in a drill and then I'll do a drill of parsnips. And then once these come up, I'll be thinning to about 20 centimeters apart. They stay in the ground until autumn after a first frost, just like parsnips. Just making sure they have contact and then cover it over. And now I'm sowing some backup parsnips and I've got a fresh packet, so the germination should be much better on these. About two centimeters down. And then I'll thin these quite a bit. If they come up. Doing a bit of weeding first before I'm going to sow some flowers. I'm going to sow some poached eggplants, which in Latin is limneth, Limnanthes douglasii. And they're called poached eggplants because they look like a poached egg with a yolk around the middle. 
and they're really good for beneficial insects. I'm going to sow them kind of all around the flower bed and in between some vegetables as well. So you can sow them quite shallowly, about a millimeter down, firm them in, and I'll give them a water. I'll do them in little groups. The ground is so dry, so I'm going to give it a good water, even though we're forecast a bit of rain. But it's nice under this mulch it's actually really good um, it's a bit damp still even after all the dryness so i'm going to sow three of my favorite flowers nasturtiums so before i fill the squash containers I'm going to be using some of the containers that things are already in, like the chili. So I'm going to plant up the chili and the sweet potato, aubergine, and the luffa, especially, into bigger pots, and then I'll fill the pots and get sowing the squash. So before I get replanting these chilies, I have to do something brutal, which is to pinch out the tops, which will create nice bushy chili pepper plants rather than this long scraggly thing that could blow over especially as we're having a windy day so it's looking lovely the variegated leaves of the trifetti pepper but I am pinching the top out so I'm just going to do a little experiment here I'm going to pinch that one out all the way there and this one I'm just going to really pinch the top so about there so I could have been more brutal on that I could probably have been more brutal on this one but I'm going to repot them up to the last leaves here so I'm not putting it in a massively bigger pot size because it doesn't need it quite yet, but I want the container. So just something like that. And I'm using the multi-purpose compost that I've been using the whole time, mixed with a bit of vermiculite for drainage because chili peppers like drainage, which means I need to grab the vermiculite. So I'm mixing in some vermiculite for a really good drainage for the chili peppers. And I'll use the same stuff for the aubergine. Really good trick is fill the bottom a bit. Just see where the level is of your current compost. So like about there. And then just fill in the, the around the sides. And then there'll be like a little square shaped hole for me to repot. So now you can take this out and hopefully you've got a square shape. Whoop. Perfect. Like I said, I'm just going to fill up to the lower leaf. They don't regenerate new roots from the stem like tomatoes do, but it's absolutely fine to do this. And it just makes it a bit sturdier in the wind. Although these are going straight back inside with me, once I've done it, because it's a bit chilly and windy today. They're done. And then I'll do the next one. And the compost is already quite moist, so I'm actually not going to water these. So that's the repotted trifetti chili peppers. So I'm going to repot the aubergine next in a pot maybe about this big. Next size up. This one's Turkish orange. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the chilies. Oh yeah, this is definitely ready to plant. Almost pot bound. Just gonna tease these gently, tease the roots gently so they explore their new pot. So that is Turkish orange. 
the next aubergine is still really teeny tiny. It was such a runt and not many of them germinated. So I am, oh, I just noticed some aphids on it. Lovely. They've been out during the day when it's been nice weather. So I'm going to repot it into this uh, one that the other aubergine just came out of. And this one is Listata di Giulia. So a purple one and an orange one. to Julia. So I just have one more aubergine to do, which I'm going to experiment leaving in the cold frame now overnight. It's still chilly in the evenings though, and there's a cold wind today. I need to get a sweater on, jumper. But I'm gonna leave one in the cold frame and I'll keep bringing one inside at night, the other one, just for an experiment. But really I only have space to grow one of the two varieties each. they can be temperamental so I'm not going to give this one away just yet now I'm going to repot the luffa which are really picky finickety plants and I see loads of roots coming out the bottom it's been in here a bit too long and I'm going to actually put it in quite a much bigger container it's not ready to plant out yet uh, so yeah it's gonna sit in here for a while it's debatable whether I use one kind of this big but I think I'm gonna go for this one I'm gonna have no space inside once I plant the squash but never mind that's for me to work out just in the nick of time I'd say So these are hungry plants in the Kirkerbit family, but I will be planting it out at the allotment. So I'll give this a good drink now, and that's the Luffa planted at. This one I don't have such high hopes for, but I only wanted one, um, but I might pot him up slightly just in case there's an accident with him. So this is the sweet potato, which has been crying out to be potted up, so I'm going to pot it up now, and I'll take off some more of the slips from the actual potato and put it in the water for more as backups. What container should I put these in? So I think this is probably a good pot size, but it'll go into a much bigger pot later on. So there is the sweet potato done. Next, I'm going to pot up the woo, late tomatoes that I sowed, um, yes, quite late, the chocolate cherry. So I'll put this one into a bigger pot, into this. And I'm also going to plant up these, which have been in here far too long, but they look quite happy. But they are bursting out of their jiffy, jiffy cells. So I'll keep them in their jiffy cells and plant them in the same type containers. But these other two are actually a mystery, but they're one of these three labels. So, um, yeah, we'll see. So if you remember from the tomato planting up video where we did the bulk of the tomatoes, you can bury these really deep up to their seed leaves. So I'm making quite, I'm not putting too much compost in the bottom. There we go. It's not the greatest day to be doing this in the wind but just be careful so that one's chocolate cherry well done I'm actually gonna go past the seed leaves I'm just gonna pinch off the tiny seed leaves and I'll go straight up to the first true leaves so that's Thai pink egg And I'm going to do the same here. This one's yellow brandy wine. So I'm going to take off these seed leaves, just pinch them off. They're yellow anyway and not really of much use anymore. And then I can bury them even deeper. Hello, bee. So 
So this one is either Sanjala or Green Zebra. So I'm going to put both labels in it. And this one, who hasn't been feeling very well, I, like I don't think it's a very strong seedling, I think is green sausage. It's the only determinant variety that I'm growing, which means like a bushy one where you don't need to pinch off the side shoots or give them support. So these are the other two really late ones I sowed, really late tomatoes, honeycomb, cherry, and cocktail crush. So I already took out the strongest seedling here and I haven't yet with this one, but I never actually pricked these out. So what I'm basically gonna do is just use a slightly bigger pot and sink them down to their uh, leaves here but they do have a lot of compost. They haven't filled this yet, so it's a bit risky, but yeah, I'm gonna plant them so they can go deeper, like to about there. So basically I'm just putting a teeny weeny bit of compost in the bottom. It's been competing with all the other plants on the windowsill for light, so it's gotten leggier than the other plants that I sowed in early March. Easily remedied for tomatoes because they generate new roots from their stem, so easy. So that's honeycomb cherry. So I have to thin to one of these and that one's clearly the strongest one. Mm, goodbye. Goodbye little seedling. Holding it by the seed leaf, not its stem while I do this. Cocktail crush. So that's it for repotting tomatoes today. So pretty much straight off the bat with squash seeds, you want really nice fertile compost. So this is really good. I don't need any vermiculite because the seeds are so huge that they can push through any of this. And I've even put the top of what I sieved out for the other seedlings in here because it's bigger particles, which is fine. I'm just breaking up any really big lumps. And then I'm gonna sow the squash into nine centimeter pots because, like I said, the seeds are so big, they can handle it. And then hopefully, as it's later in the season, once they fill these pots, I can plant them straight out at the allotment because they don't love having root disturbance. And to be honest, I didn't get on very well with the ones I transplanted last year. So I sowed them in pots like this, transplanted them into pots, like, kind of like this or a bit bigger and then put them at the allotment and the ones that I direct sowed actually did better. These are slightly bigger than the nine centimeter pots but I've run out after scavenging for old pots at the allotment. So let's get sowing. So I'm also going to plant up the turmeric into a bigger pot so it's finally growing really nicely and it's quite a bigger pot but it's growing really quickly so I think it'll be okay in here. Um, and it's not going to like being outside on this cold day, but I'll move quick. That's turmeric. So I'm also going to finally separate the ginger, which has gone wild, and I've been keeping it in this really tiny pot. So I'm going to lift it out, separate them a bit, and then repot them. Oh, it smells like ginger. I'm gonna try and do this gently. There we go. So you can actually see, look at those roots. Don't put this into a new pot. Probably do an even bigger pot than this. I need more compost. So that is the end of my silver grow bag. And everything we've done so far this year has been from that one bag, which is pretty cool. Plus the vermiculite. Actually, this wants to be free draining. So, some vermiculite. Oh, it smells so good. Even outside, I can smell the roots. They smell like ginger. So lovely. I think I buried the label 
I don't need this many ginger, so I might give them away to neighbors. Pull us knee. That's it. So for the herbs, I'm going to be planting, sowing, five different basils in here. I really, really like basil and every year I feel like I don't grow enough. And then I'm gonna use two little containers for some wild and lemon bergamot and another container for three different kinds of shiso, which I have accidentally double purchased. Um, yes. So I'm gonna start by sowing the sweet green basil and the germination rate on basil is pretty good. So I'm not going to over sow. <clears throat> but at the same time, these are quite old seeds. So I'm just going to sow this much in a line. And I'm, I'm sowing five different types of basil. So I'm going to do five lines in here. The first one being in the middle. The next one I'm going to sow is a purple basil. And these basils, the next one I'm going to sow is a purple basil. And the best time of year is sort of late spring because they do like their heat. So that's what Jekka recommends as well. Then the next one is a lime basil and this has a bit of a taste of lime to it, which is really cool. And then the one after that is gonna be a lemon ba basil, which tastes a bit like lemon. And this one is the lemon basil. I'm just pressing them in slightly so they don't kind of roll away. And then the last one is some very old lettuce leaved basil that uh, my mother-in-law gave me. But they are quite old, so I'm gonna over sew. And these are, well, the leaves look a bit like lettuce and they're a bit ruffled as well, I think. That's the variety. So yes, pressing them in gently so they don't kind of roll around. And then I'm gonna cover it with a layer of vermiculite or you could use perlite. and then I'm gonna give them a water. And then after this, I'll put them on the heated propagator because they germinate best at around 18 degrees, but you don't need a heated propagator if you don't have one. And they'll stay inside with me until I prick them out into their own pots and then plant them out at the allotment and some for pots in the garden. So I'm gonna sow three kinds of shiso next, cause one isn't enough. A purple shiso, a green shiso, and a green leaved shiso, which has a slightly different Latin name. I really like the taste of shiso. It's kind of between like mint and basil, but also has a bit of kind of like a cinnamony flavor. It's just, yeah, you need to try it. You need to try it, grow some. And it's very similar to growing basil. So same kind of, method here I'm going to use. Seeds are slightly different. So the green shiso, this one is a brand new packet I got because I'm a Herb Society member and they came in a little goodie bag with our annual general, general meeting information. So that's really nice, which is why I'm growing three different types. Otherwise, I would have just been growing my green leaved one and the purple shiso that I grew last year. Not many left of those. It's interesting that all three varieties of the shiso have quite different seeds. And I'm just gonna cover over with a layer of vermiculite again. Watering them like the basil. I'll put the propagator on and then I'll put this on the heated propagator with the basil. 
So I'm going to sew the annual lemon bergamot flower. The leaves and the flower petals are edible. And I grew these last year. They're really nice. These are the very fine seeds. I'm just scattering them all since the seed packet's already a couple of years old on the surface. And then I'm also going to do the wild bergamot, which has a slightly different Latin name. And this one is perennial. The leaves and the petals are edible. So I'm going to sew all of those the same way. And this one. So as the seeds are really, really fine, I'm just putting a really light scattering of vermiculite on the top. And then I'll put both of these on the heated propagator as well. So now I'm going to sew the squash. A perfect time to do it, sort of late April, early May. I'm sewing eight different varieties, which is definitely overkill. <laughs> um, I don't have that much space at the allotment, so I'm gonna grow some of them vertically over archways, and I might even try growing one in the compost heap this year. So the first one I'm gonna grow, I've grown many times before, and it's Uchiki Curry. You plant them a bit like the courgette. Uh, these are about kind of a centimeter to two centimeters down. And once again, like all the cucurbit family, gourd family, you want to plant the seeds on their sides, so like this down into the soil, not like this, so water doesn't gather on the surface and causes it to rot. So I'm sowing two seeds per nine centimeter pot I've got here, and I'm hoping that because it's very late April, early May, that this is the only container I'll need them in and I don't need to pot up, so I'll be able to plant out once they've filled this container. And I'll be thinning to the strongest seedling in here. So that's the sweet and nutty Uchiki curry. The next one is another classic for me, the delicious crown prince squash, which is a blue kind of light blue hued with a really, really amazing orange flesh in the middle. And it's really, really tasty. And the next one is a new one for me from Vital Seeds. I got a few different squash varieties from Vital Seeds. This one's red curry. So it's a bit like Uchiki curry, but it's not an F1, so I should be able to save seeds. Although because I'm growing eight different varieties of squash, they can easily cross-pollinate with each other, meaning that next year, if I save seeds, they won't be the same as the parent. This one's Galo de Zine, and I grew it last year again. I only have three seeds left, but it's gonna do two. So these squash are really nice and they get quite warty and you can actually draw your name in the warts as they're growing, which I didn't do last year. And actually my ones last year didn't get that warty either. So I'm coming back big on the squash this year. I'm going to take it very seriously. So this is another new one for me and it's a green Hokkaido kabucha type. It's called Meru Meruen. Not sure if that's exactly how you pronounce it. I ran out of nine centimeter pots. So these are quite big, but again, I'm hoping if I don't overwater them that they'll be absolutely fine in here and I can just plant them straight from this into the allotment beds. The next one from also from Vital Seeds and another biggish one is Oregon Homestead. So it's a Hubbard type pumpkin squash. It's still a winter squash, but um, this is probably as close as I've ever gotten to growing a pumpkin, which I've never actually grown before. I always grow squash because I find them much tastier and I don't need giant pumpkins. Um, I just want them to taste really good, really. Um, so these two last ones are quite big, but hopefully they're gonna taste good too. So the next two squash are really quite small and I didn't have the most fantastic germination last year. So I'm actually gonna do three and they're a bit smaller than the others, even the seeds. I'm going to still try and put them on their sides. And the sweet dumpling are really beautiful, kind of cream colored with green splashes on them. They're really pretty and they are so tasty. Uh, they kind of taste like chestnuts. And honey bear, they're a really dark green with bright orange flesh. And to be honest, 
Last year, I didn't get any fruits, but I think it's because I was growing them on, an, on the end of a bed. I was really trying to squish them in and they really just didn't have enough space to kind of get going and they dried out. And now I said that I had eight squash and I was wrong. I completely forgot about my butternut squash being the ninth. So I found a seed tray, an extra seed tray. So I'll squish in three seeds of the early butternut, butternut squash. And maybe I'll give some away if I get extras. So the pot's not really deep enough, but I'll put them, I'll transfer them as soon as they come up to something more suitable. So that is it for the squash. Now the compost was already fairly damp, so I'm just gonna give them a really light water. And then I'm gonna put them on the heated propagator. And you don't need a heated propagator again, but it just means that germination's a bit quicker. And so they get kind of a head start without hanging around in the wet soil for too long. So I really like my kales and it's overkill again, but I'm sowing five different varieties this year, three of which I've grown before. And I'm starting with one that's not technically a kale, but it's called tree cabbage and it grows just like kale. So it's Paul and Becky's Asturian tree cabbage. And I've got it actually growing on the plot at the moment and it is amazing, I love it so much. So I only have space for one of each of these kale uh, plants and they're really hard workers, so that's fine. So I'm gonna fit five in each of these seed trays, but I'm gonna over sow and I can give them away if I've got too many. So about one and a half millimeters deep, just like most of the brassicas we've sown already like the cauliflower we did in February, and what else did we do? Purple sprouting broccoli, I think we did all sorts. All the seeds look really similar in the brassica family. So these, these are actually quite old seeds uh, from 2017, uh, but it's a really nice plant, So um, and brassica seeds last a really long time, so they should be fine. I should get at least two germinating. This one is a new one from Vital Seeds, Kale Dazzling Blue. Last year I was without a Cavallonero type kale, so I was sure to be having some this year. So I'm getting a blue variety I've never tried and then the classic Cavallonero, uh, Nero di Toscana as well. And the Nero di Toscana Cavallonero type is from Otter Farm. So any of the extras I have that come up, you, I can eat as like a baby leaf kale, which is what I did for the other ones. And then the strongest seedlings, I will move on to modules, or I might just plant them straight out. We'll see what the weather's like. Pentland Brig. These seeds are very old from 2016. So we'll see how these germinate. I'm not gonna hold my breath. I've just got five seeds left. That's the end of that now. So sad. And then the last one is from Children's Seeds and it's Cottager's Kale. These are a little newer from 2019. And each of them have slightly different Latin names, but they all start with Brassica oleracea. So that's all my kale's done. And I could leave it like this, but um, my fungus gnats are terrible at the moment and I feel like covering with a tiny bit of vermiculite actually makes a difference. Stops them laying eggs a little bit. Also just gives them a little bit more depth. And I'm not gonna put these ones on the heated propagator, but the minute they show above the soil, I'll put them in the cold frame. And in fact, I could just put these in the cold frame now. Next, I'm gonna sow two different types of cabbage. Both of these are new for me. So I'm gonna do two rows each. Same sort of depth as the kale. Caroflex is not a savoy, it's a hispy type cabbage. And then I'm gonna plant a savoy. And then we already have one uh, germinated. And this one looks gorgeous. It's like pink and green. So I've not grown this, but I'm excited to see what it looks like. And they've given me like a million seeds in here. So I'm gonna be growing this for years. So this one is uh, Brassica and it's called Kailan. It's a really, really good one. So it tastes like a cross between sprouting broccoli and asparagus. You can eat the leaves, stalks and uh, flowers and flower buds and it, can, and it grows back. It's really good to sow.
and you can sow from early spring to late autumn, which is nice. So you can sow sort of successionally and it can keep producing if you grow undercover. And then I'm gonna give everything a nice water. Just keep these inside till they germinate or I might just put them in the cold frame because we are running out of space inside. Just trying to find space for the last two seed trays. Aubergines, the luffos, squash, double double decker herbs. There's no more space on the heated propagator. And the basil got booted off, and so it's no longer on the heated propagator, but they'll take turns. Squash, not squash, kirkerbell, they're kirkerbits. Chilies, sweet potatoes, more tomatoes, the ginger, big tomatoes, sweet corn, beans. Yeah, it's a party. And I really need to prick out this digitalis, but uh, that'll wait till next week. So in the morning, these things get kind of booted out for the day and then they get brought back in at night still because we're still having pretty cold nights. So I really hope you enjoyed that propagating episode. If you did, you could consider subscribing using the button down here and you could press up here to watch other episodes, which will shortly include some of the other garden visits and also a plot and garden tour. So I think I'm gonna do them more seasonally. And yeah, so watch out for that one. If you click the notification bell as well, then you'll know when my next episodes go up. Thanks so much.